Welcome to Channel X, sponsored by Volo. I'm delighted to be joined today by Mark Rushmore, and co-founder and chief commercial officer of Surrey. So welcome, Mark. How are you? I am great. Thanks so much for having me, Chris. I've just come back from a holiday um, and feeling refreshed and, and excited about the year, the rest of the year ahead. Fantastic. Now, I want to get straight down to it. You've launched a new range of toothbrushes. I want to find out, how did you launch the business? How did you get established? How did you design the product? Tell me everything about um, how you take an idea and a concept to an actual brand and a product that's being sold all over the place, on, on, online, on marketplaces, in, in retailers. How did you get started? What, what, what even gave you the idea? So great question. So um, I started my career, I worked at Procter & Gamble in a variety of sales and strategy roles, ultimately managing Pringles when it was sold to Kellogg. So I helped transition it there. Um, I then set up the UK office of a German experiential marketing agency. And during my time, I sort of scaled that business from my kitchen through to uh, an exit over a five year period. And during that time, I won Oral-B as a client across Europe. So I became really familiar with how the dental um trade works and particularly how like you know people like oral be engaged with dental professionals and it kind of just really sparked an interest uh in me in that industry and then during that time i also met my co-founder Give. he also started his career at png but in finance and marketing ultimately managing the venus raises for emia um and the very first time we met we both i guess bonded over you know our shared experiences from working at png but also in our belief that the future of fmcg there would be some maybe some core differences and those would be the products would have sustainability at their core you know really there's there's so much that we can do to make products more sustainable i think the second one is user experience we felt had like really has progressed a lot you know from apple you know whether it comes to the unboxing or the aesthetics or the advertising or even the customer service and we felt that there was an opportunity to improve uh, customer experience um but to do both sustainability and customer experience without compromising on quality and performance. And so, you know, when we looked into um, toothbrushes, we found out that every year over 4 billion get thrown away and end up in landfill and oceans. And that virtually every brush you probably ever use, Chris, probably still exists somewhere and will do for a long time. So, yeah, yeah I've, I've got to admit that it's plastic handle, plastic bristles. It, 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 it can't be the best for the world, if I'm honest. And and sadly, they make it worse because to keep it hygienic, they put it in a bubble wrapped plastic bit of cardboard to deliver it to me. So there's even more plastic coming with it. So how are you solving that problem? Because um, uh, it, it, the handle plastic, it makes it hygienically cleanable. And the bristles need to be tough and not just wear away the first time you use it. How do you even start with designing something that is sustainable, but still hygienic and, and functional? Definitely. So um, we also noted as well, as well as, you know, problems with sustainability, electric brushes, in our opinion, hadn't meaningfully changed in decades. So they they remained quite bulky. We've actually got some adverts from like the early 1980s and then like the most recent products <laughs> and they look pretty identical. Um, in terms of size and so on and so we thought let's let's sort of work back and, and work out what's important so we you know said we want to have a slim brush that was powerful made from more sustainable materials with a long-lasting battery um, that looked great and we went to i think it was i think it was about 24 factories in total um with our sort of concept and a good 23 of them just laughed and, and said you know no like, you know, you can take a off the shelf product, which is what a lot of people do. You know, you take an OEM product, yep. you can reskin it with your your name, you can choose a color. Um, but the problem was no one was making um, these toothbrushes with the materials that we wanted to. You know, people told us it would be impossible to make bristles using uh, castor oil. So it's a plant based uh, material. And, you know, the sort of the thought was, well, we haven't done it before. We won't be able to do it again. And it might, you know, there's complications in using it. But um, I must say that credit to my co-founder, Give. He is the most stubborn person I've ever met. I mean, like he, he just will not take no for an answer, which, you know, in this example is, is great because, you know, when all these factories were saying no, I was saying to him, you know, maybe 
maybe it's just not going to be possible. Um, I've, and I've I, got to admit, that I, two dozen factories before you can find one that says, yes, that is a lot yeah. of nose to face. And I, th I think that's a yeah. problem a lot of founders have that you've got to be so dogged and determined and, uh, and just reject the no's if you're convinced and, and keep going until you get the yes. But it, it's hard work, isn't it? It is. And, and I'm, I, I, you know, I really, I must say like Eve is, is just a, like a master of it. Um, more so than me, you know, I'm, I would say I'm fairly resilient, but he, he will keep pushing to the point where actually one time we were trying to get our visa into China and he'd filled out the form incorrectly. And, and he was arguing with the Chinese embassy that the form was wrong. Um, which, uh, I, I had to pull him away eventually so that we didn't uh, get banned. Um, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it is, you know, it's a real, it is a real skill. And I've seen it time and again, where, you know, we've been told things are impossible or, oh, you know, those terms, they're not negotiable, um, only f to find out, you know, after a lot of persistence that actually there is, there is a way. Um, so, yeah, so we finally found a factory who are willing to sort of take a chance with us and invest um, alongside us in exploring new materials. So we use cornstarch to make the head, castor oil in the bristles, we offer free recycling of the heads are handle. You mentioned the hygiene of plastic is made from uh, aluminium. So it's, you know, both a really highly recyclable, material, highly recyclable. Um, and so um, actually, what about the batteries? So we use uh, lithium batteries, um, which you have to use for rechargeable batteries. But there's two kind of key points of difference, I think, versus most of our uh, competitors. One is we have designed our brush in a modular way, so we can. There's a tiny screw in the bottom, so when it does come to the end of life, as a lithium battery will at some point, we can um, take it apart and either repair the battery or we can recycle and, and reuse different parts um, as necessary. So that's one part. But then the second part is our battery. We we don't we don't include Bluetooth because you know lots of toothbrushes now have AI or or. Um, it seems like a bit of a gimmick to me. Well, in our research of thousands of consumers, we found that 99.5% of them don't use um, the like Bluetooth at all. Maybe they use it once or twice and then don't. But as a result of it, you know, constantly searching for your phone, the batteries often die. And so um, you have to constantly recharge them. And so a lot of people get irritated yeah. by having to recharge their brush uh, constantly. But as you probably know, with lithium batteries, if you leave them on charge, it actually degrades the, the yeah. battery faster. So because we don't include sort of these gimmicky features, our battery lasts um, over 40 days on a single charge. Wow. Which means that Once a month a, charging. Yeah. A, you spend less time charging and more time just brushing your teeth, which is what you should do. But B, you only have to charge it um, a few times a year, which means that the, the lithium battery life should be extended mm. over the long run versus leaving it on charge constantly. And this is great. And when the product does come to the end of its life, did you say that you actually accept them back? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's exactly right. So we offer, well, two parts. So with the heads, we provide a prepaid compostable mailer bag, which is, um, you know, prepaid with a Royal Mail. So you put ideally four heads into it, seal it, put it into the post, and it comes back to us. Uh, we're actually working with the University of Exeter on, on an exciting program for what we're going to take and remake with um, the the material essentially because we grind it down and then we remake it into other things. So that will be coming out in the in the sort of next few months, hopefully. Um, and then with the actual brush itself, we do offer returns, free returns. And so if the brush is broken or it needs replacement, um, we send someone a, a mailer bag. It comes back to us. We then uh, well, quarantine it, and then we sort it into, you know, different uh, files. And then, yeah, we take those and we look to see whether they can sort of be immediately repaired or whether we need to strip them into different components and then reuse different bits and pieces so that we can then have, like, refurbished brushes in the same way that someone like Apple does. So talk of circularity, this is really, like, like great news to me because we're, we're constantly seeing the government saying on things like, oh, white goods or home electricals, retailers are going to have to take them back sooner or later. So see a company that not only is using sustainable materials in the first place, but has got the full journey to the end of life of product and, and the heads as well. Um, it, 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 it's just fantastic. But Thank you. Uh, oh, the only thing I would say is that it's, it's like a never ending process. Like we're constantly looking for ways 
that we can improve it. You know, like actually we've got some new packaging coming out, which is reduced in, in, in size. Um, we found new materials, which are more compostable. Um, and so I thank you that, you know, we, we have made significant progress, but for us, it's like a never ending thing. You know, there's always going to be ways that you can improve and we'll keep kind of going after them. We're definitely not perfect. Um, but we'll just keep kind of going because it's in our DNA. So talk to me about your sales strategy. What's consumer perception of the product been like and acceptance? Um, which channels do you use? I know I've seen you on Amazon. I've seen you in Boots. Which, which channels do you use to market? And I know you've also got the, the subscription. And, and what have sales been like? Um, how long have you actually been f fully, fully retailing the product? And what's the growth been? So we started shipping our very first product in May 22. So I keep saying 18 months ago, but actually we're in March now. So it's, it's yeah, two years. Almost, <laughs> it's almost almost two years now. Um, and the reception has been wonderful. I think your first question was like, how, how consumers responded to it? And that's probably my, my favorite part of the whole business. So our rating is 4.8 on Trustpilot, uh, making it by far the most highly rated electric brush on Trustpilot. Um, and that's with over four and a half thousand, it might even be 5,000 now, um, reviews. And you, people aren't just like, love it, thanks. People write paragraphs like, you know, never have I enjoyed brushing my teeth. And now I look forward to brushing my teeth. I'm brushing my teeth more regularly. And they, you know, it gives me this like amazing feel like I've just been to the hygienist. And people write so in like these superlatives and use the word love. And, and it's just, it's sort of, that's always what we wanted to move towards. Give in particular talks about, not creating a minimal viable product, which kind of came from software and then you would iterate yeah. it quickly, but creating a minimal lovable product. Um, because in hardware, you really get one opportunity to to make that impression and you know it has to last clearly and you can't just do software updates. And so that 4.8 rating means the world to us. And we have a, an API from Trustpilot to Slack so that every time a review comes in, we get it in real time and it goes well, to everyone on the team. And so it also means that we can respond if, you know, Occasionally, there will be an issue. Someone's shipment will go missing, or someone's dropped it, or, or maybe customer service hasn't responded in a in a timely manner um, because we're overwhelmed with you know requests or something. But it just enables us to know, you know, okay, what's the sentiment? What's happening? How can we respond? You know, where do we need to to focus? Um, so that's been really useful. Then, in terms of business performance, so um, you know, in the last twelve months, we've done over ten million pounds in sales, which is just wild to think actually in, actually that, that was in 2023 in the last 12 months we've done more than that now um and it's you know it's predominantly driven by d2c so you know we have a, a large direct consumer business um and that's you know a lot of people discover us on facebook or instagram ads um but then we've been really lucky to have support as well in the press so you know if you type in best electric toothbrush i think we appear in I think eight of the top 10 searches and, you know, the reviewers are very generous in terms of, you know, their enjoyment of the product. So that helps. Um, and yeah, and I mean, which, like uh, which we sell... channels do you use for, for retailing other than your own website, you, you've mentioned Facebook, Pinterest ads, but where, where else can people buy the Surrey toothbrush? Yeah. So in the UK, um, we started in Selfridges and then we launched on Amazon. Uh, we were on an Amazon accelerator program, and actually, I must say, like we 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 really nerd out about Amazon. There's a lot. Our Amazon business is growing very quickly um, in the UK, and then we also are in Boots, who are a fantastic retailer of electric toothbrushes, probably the leading retailer on the high street of electric toothbrushes. So just learning a lot from them and, and working really collaboratively and seeing um, sort of sustained growth, which is just brilliant. And then we actually sell in America as well. So um, we uh, are sold on Goop, which is Gwyneth Paltrow's platform. And then we're also in Erewhon, which is a chain of um, high-end stores in LA. They're kind of like a high-end Whole Foods. And then actually we were approached by CBS, the news channel in, in the US. Yep. So we were just recently on CBS a couple of weeks ago and they had a sort of sales segment. So that was really interesting to sort of see that as an, an emerging channel. And then we actually also just launched on Amazon in the US about three weeks ago and are seeing just phenomenal growth there. So yes, we, we have a, an omni-channel approach and really, you know, we think it's much more about consumers. Like we're, we're sort of channel agnostic to an extent. It's just trying to, you know, provide the shopper with um, the right product at the right time, wherever they shop. So I've got to ask the question for everyone else out there. 
you pretty much gone in two years from a standing start to a, a 10 million pound business how do you do it what are your top tips for other entrepreneurs that are looking to build a big business and frankly the scale from zero to 10 million is is massive well thank you very much yeah no i mean it, it sounds massive but it really just feels like we're getting started i always say this and you know it's a bit tongue-in-cheek but it's also true loads of people brush their teeth like it is an enormous market like it really is and despite that, there's only two players who have a, like a, a roughly 75% share. So it's really dominated by, by two companies. Now, if you think of something which is as high penetration, you know, so like shoes, everyone wears shoes. Um, there aren't two companies that have a 75% share. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a really competitive market with lots of different players and lots of different um, opportunities and, and products. And so I think what we've stumbled across, and I think, you know, partly it's luck I, I would I wouldn't say it's like you know purely us I think you know like we've had a lot of luck but um, I think there's always luck involved but I find mm. you get more luck if you're doing lots of the right things and then you're lucky it works but you might have like you said, 24 factories you were lucky you found a factory but <laughs> there was 24 you had to do the work first that's that's definitely true as well I think I think really it's like it's it's I always think it's it's almost like business fundamentals, you know, find a big market, which has like a big problem and create a solution for that. You don't have to explain toothbrushes to anyone. Everyone, you know, really knows about toothbrushes and has done from a very early age. Whereas if you're creating, I don't know, a CBD drink or something, you have to, there's a certain element of education and hurdle you need to come over. Um, so, you know, everyone knows what a toothbrush is. Um, a lot of people really dislike the fact that they're so unsustainable, that um, the batteries die so quickly, that they're clunky, that they, they don't look nice. Um, and so I think we almost saw a, 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 there was like a problem in plain sight. And then we've just gone about trying to provide like a really good solution um, or as good a solution as we can to that problem. And then the thing is, because it's such a huge market and it's growing, you know, electric toothbrushes have double digit growth forecasted year on year for the next five years. Over 50% of people in the US, UK and Germany, as well as other developed markets use electric toothbrushes. And that that share is only increasing because they're so much more effective at providing uh, superior dental care. Uh, so I think we're riding that that wave of, of growth when we're riding the fact that consumers do want to have another option, which addresses some of their problems. And so I think that is like the kind of core of, of what's enabled us to grow. Um, and then the second part really is, is how much the consumers enjoy the, the experience, whether that's, you know, ordering it, the aesthetics when they order it, how quickly it arrives, the unboxing, our customer service. We really, really invest in, in ensuring that we treat people with as much sort of respect and try and surprise and delight them with, with a with a really great product and a really great service i mean we just genuinely really care about what we're doing and i think that level of care translates through to the customer experience and then that translates into the 4.8 rating on trustpilot but more importantly the word of mouth and so our referral rate is is enormous and you know we have a post checkout survey which reveals that you know after our ads the number one source of traffic for us is referral um and you wouldn't think you know you buy a toothbrush and then tell all of your friends about it but <laughs> you know it's something that you use twice a day and if it can give you like that that moment of enjoyment in the morning and the evening it makes you feel you know really refreshed and clean and, and confident then then yeah I mean people are sort of sharing the word and so I think those are the kind of core things that have um enabled us to kind of grow as quickly but we're really just getting started you know there's there's lots more people yeah. who brush their teeth and, and talking of just getting started i know you've just recently raised a round of finance and mm. what is that raise about and what are your plans for the future where, where, where do you see this business in another two years time yeah well it's funny if you asked me that two years to where we are now and i'm not even sure i'd have you know said wow we, we could be where we are so in another two years it, it feels like a lifetime away but um Yes, we've just completed a, a six million pound Series A fundraising with phenomenal investors. You know, we have um, longtime investors, Hambro Perks, who've invested in previous rounds. 
Um, we have Jam Jar, which was set up by the founders of Innocent Smoothies. Um, and so uh, Richard Reed from Innocent Smoothies sits on our board. And then we have uh, V3, who are part of the Verlin Vest um, family who invested into um, people like Oatly and Tony Strocoloni. And then we also have DMG Ventures, uh, who've also invested in a variety of really great brands. So we're really lucky to have, you know, these consumer investor experts who really helped guide us in previous rounds. And, and you know, we've got plans for the future. And in terms of what we're going to do with the money, um, we are growing, you know, rapidly in the UK, but also in the US. And I think, you know, there's other markets. We get phone calls and, and emails on a sort of a, a probably monthly basis now um, from different people who'd like us to sell into their market. Um, I mean, this doesn't mean we're going to do it. Maybe I shouldn't mention this on the call, but an exclusive for you is someone, someone fairly prominent from Japan has just emailed me this morning saying, look, I'm in London for 48 more hours. I bought your product for my wife. She absolutely loves it. You know, would, would you be able to meet me tomorrow? But Japan is a huge market, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, but we've got to try and, you know, really remain focused. There's, we could do lots of different things, but for us being focused is is kind of one of the core things that we want to do to try and run as lean as possible and, and really focus on on the core. Business. So watch this space. And I know your co-founder, Jeeve, is speaking at our Subscription X event in, the, I think it's the 14th of May, um, yeah. but would love to catch up with you guys again in the future. Um, maybe at Channel X World Conference in the spring or, or on another video video call. But thank you so much for your time, Mark. Been fascinating. Huge congratulations on getting to the 10 million. And definitely looking forward in a year or two years' time to finding out where, where you've taken the business then. Super. Thank you very much, Chris.